This video is brought to you by Osmocote, the planter's plant food. Hi, I'm Ryan Lee from Indiana University, and today I have a gardening tip about calculating fertilizer rates. Okay. So um, on a container of fertilizer, you will typically find three numbers. So I'm going to draw up an example here, 12, 12, 12. So those numbers represent the percentage of the total amount of that fertilizer that is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So in this example, if we had a 12-12-12 fertilizer, 12% of that bag is actually nitrogen, 12% is phosphorus, and 12% is potassium. So if we want to calculate how much fertilizer we need to use for a per particular circumstance, that depends on a lot of things. It depends on um, the soil test. It also depends on the plants that you're growing. So a good example is around here we like to apply one pound of nitrogen uh, per 1,000 square feet of turf grass, our lawn. We apply this nitrogen in the fall. Um, so how much fertilizer do we actually have to put on our yard? To answer that, we say, well, if we've got our, so let's, let's do a different example here. We're going to use a 20-20-20 fertilizer. So how much 20-20-20 do we need to put on our yard to equal one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet? So that would be um, one per thousand square feet of turf grass. Then we know that um, for every one pound of fertilizer, there is 0 0.2 pounds of nitrogen. So if we multiply that across, that gives us five pounds of fertilizer per thousand square feet. So the take home point about this is it's actually very little fertilizer that we're placing on our yard. So you want to think about this in terms of a five pound bag of sugar spread across a thousand square feet. It's not a lot of fertilizer and that is going to be important. So to really demonstrate that, I thought it was good, it would be good if we actually, if I actually showed you how much fertilizer to put in a small pot, a uh, small container. I'm going to erase this and do one more calculation here. So to do that, um, we're going to use uh, Osmocote. And on the side of our Osmocote, it actually tells us the percentage of, of NPK by weight in Osmocote. And it turns out to be 19,612. I'm going to write that up here. Our, so if we were wanting to fertilize a, a small pot, let's say a six inch square pot. How much Osmocote do we need to put in that square pot? So the first thing that we need to, de 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 to determine is how many acres is in a six inch square pot. So this is equal to 0.25 square feet. And there's 43,560 square feet per acre, which means that we have a very small amount of acres. We have 0 0.000005 acres to fertilize in this example. Right. So, um, the total number of acreage in our pot is this. The total number of pounds per acre of nitrogen that we want to get in that pot is 50. So if we multiply our acreage by 50, then we end up with 0 0.00025 pounds of nitrogen per pot. That's how many pounds of nitrogen that we want to place in that pot. Now our Osmocote is 19% nitrogen. We need to multiply our total number of pounds of nitrogen per pot 
by the amount of nitrogen that is in each pound of osmocote fertilizer. That comes out to 0 0.0013 pounds of osmocote per six inch square pot. So I've measured that out downstairs on the scales and that is the amount of osmocote that we need per six inch square pot. Okay, so the importance of this is a few things. One, if you put too much fertilizer on your plant, then you will uh, cause it to uh, grow leaves instead of flowers and fruits. It will do things that you don't want it to do. Um, you'll get fewer tomatoes, you'll get fewer petunias, you'll get a lot more leaves and a lot more stem tissue in response. Um, Two is that dry fertilizers act like salts. They tend to, to dehydrate uh, plant material and burn. Three is that any fertilizer, any nitrogen that is not used up by that plant in a short amount of time is able to move through the soil and into the water column where it will end up into lar in large bodies of water like rivers, and streams, and lakes, and oceans and it will cause things to grow that you do not want to grow. It will cause algal blooms or it will cause the growth of, of bacteria and these things cause fish kills. So if we want to have fertilizer available for f home use in the future, then we have to be very careful about the amount that we use and use our calculations to determine how much to put in each circumstance. So I'm Ryan Lee from Indiana University. This has been your gardening tip for today. Thanks for watching.